Good evening, folks. A lot of you have been asking for this one. We're going to go over the major differences between the 6,000 and 12,000 year cycles of the catastrophe. What does the Earth do in each? What does the Sun do? And what about the galactic environment that makes it so? Perhaps the most important question is when the solar micronova happens and why? And then, conversely, what happens during the other cycle, the half cycle, and what are its impacts? Which one can burn with the flash of light itself? While both types of cycles on the 6,000 and 12,000 year marks would spell the end of an electrified world, sending us back to the Stone Age, taking out satellites, airplanes, power grids, and critical infrastructure. Only one of them, however, makes the Earth turn over. While both cause tremendous floods, only one is capable of impacting the entire world at continental scales, with massive tsunamis washing from one side to the other. To begin, the answer to all of these points is the galactic magnetic field. Not the poloidal component, but the radial field threading the disk, and their undulations housed within the galactic current sheet. Now if this is unfamiliar, you really need to do the homework. It's listed right below the video in the description box. But for those keeping up with class, you know this is the reason for the season, the Earth disaster cycle. But how does our place within it really matter? Well first, let's do this a bit graphically. Let's put up a sine wave here to show the galactic current sheet and it's moving outward from the galactic center, hitting our solar system every 12,000 years. We are at the black line there. Now while there is a bit of up and down to the sun over millions of years throughout the galaxy, it is minuscule by comparison to the sheet and it basically takes forever. So I don't care which way you picture the sheet moving, the sine wave to the left or to the right, as long as you can see how it's crossing the black line, where we can imagine our solar system, at equidistant marks. Now let's remember, the galactic current sheet contains the magnetic reversal point, which is where there is a null, a magnetic zero point. At the exact crossing moment, we will be subject to zero galactic magnetism. It is also the dusty plasma density maximum, as the galactic sheet is acting like an electrostatic Swiffer duster sweeping through the galaxy. So now, let's go ahead and put the impacts to the galactic current sheet on here. Those are at the red stars, 12,000 years apart, marking when our solar system is taking the impact from the galactic current sheet taking the magnetic reversal and the galactic zero null point, while also taking the dust and plasma density maximum. The magnetic null reduces luminosity in the solar wind of our star, allowing that extra dust and plasma to accumulate at the sun, and when we come out of the sheet, they reignite and blast off that shell of material in what we call the solar micronova. The induction from that event cooks the partially melted layer between the crust and mantle which is locking them together right now, and when it melts the crust is unlocked and free to turn and tilt and reorient. So the micronova and earth tilt, those happen on the 12,000 year cycle. So then what is the 6,000 year cycle? That would be these green dots, where we still get a magnetic excursion at earth, but we don't tilt and there are no nova level isotopes in those sediment layers like there are at the 12,000 year scale. But let's think about this. If the sine wave, the galactic current sheet, is the magnetic zero point, when do we endure peak galactic magnetic force? Yep, right in the middle, when we are at the furthest from the sheet, every 6,000 years. This is also the moment when we get closer to the next sheet crossing as opposed to being closer to the one that just hit us before, which means that at these 6,000 year marks, the upcoming sheet has more of an impact on our solar system than the previous one. And so that shift where a push becomes a pull or a pull becomes a push happens at peak galactic magnetic force. So there's no dusty plasma to build up on the sun in this one. The sun's electrodynamic activity isn't short-circuited by the galactic magnetic reversal on the 6,000 year half cycle. In fact, it is maximized by that peak galactic field exposure. This amping up of activity is the opposite of a micronova buildup, which results from low activity. And it results in the 6,000 year super flare of about X1000. It's been confirmed many times in the peer reviewed literature. And it really is that simple. Zero galactic magnetism versus peak galactic magnetism. No surprise, they both impact Earth's magnetism, but they have opposing impacts on the sun. 
So as simply as it can be stated, the 12,000 year event is the galactic magnetic reversal, the zero point, creating the solar micronova, which is how you get the flash burning, by the way. It has the solar system magnetic shift and the major geomagnetic excursion and extinction level event. The 6,000 year event is still pretty bad, just not quite as bad as the 12,000 year one. Peak galactic field exposure, X1000 super flare, probably some solar system impacts too, but at least certainly the minor excursion in Earth's geologic record, and because the protons from the X1000 super flare are following the cusp, they superheat the polar ice and cause a Heinrich event, which causes widespread floods and then chills the globe. You may need to watch this again, went kind of quickly, but this is it. This is the entire difference between the 6,000 and 12,000 year events, what happens and why. I'll see you in the morning for the daily show. Be safe, everyone.